So meeting call to order of the Town Board of Grand Island for January 19th, 2016. Um, roll call. Councilman Billico? Here. Councilman Aronica? Where is it? Councilwoman McKinney? Here. Councilman Madigan? Here. Supervisor McMurray? Here. We're now going to have the invocation by Elder Eric Lash of the Bible Presbyterian Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Christopher Aronica. Please stand. Customary, Almighty God, ruler of heaven and earth, thank you for such a beautiful uh, January sunny day today. Another day, Lord, to live and learn and study and work and love our families. Father, we thank you that we can live in this great country and be in this great part of Western New York. Lord, we pray tonight as these deliberations take place that you give wisdom and good judgment to these elected officials who strive to do what's good and best for this community, for our businesses, our neighborhoods, and our families. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice. So we're going to begin with the public comments section. Um, please remember, if you have anything to, to say tonight, that you state your name and your address. It's going to be recorded for the record. Any comments tonight for agenda items? Okay, moving on. So there's three, I'm going to do this in one motion. There's three... Uh, Minutes we need to approve. The minutes of workshop meeting number one, January 4, 2016. Regular meeting number one, January 4, 2016. And workshop meeting number two, January 8, 2016. Can I I'm going to entertain a motion. Second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call. Veronica? Bellico? Aye. Kinney? Aye. Madigan? Aye. McMurray? Aye. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. We have the building permits let issued in December 2015. There is a Golden Age Center facility usage report from December 2015. The meeting minutes of the Historic Preservation Advisory Board from November 20th, 2015. The meeting minutes of the Zoning Board of Appeals from December 3rd, 2015. And the letter to the, from the State Assembly of New York regarding the roundabout at Staley Road. I'm going to entertain a motion to accept these items. Any discussion? Roll call. Kinney? Aye. Billica? Aye. Aronica? Aye. Madigan? Aye. McMurray? Aye. Are there any communications from the town board members tonight? Okay. Okay, I'm going to take the next motion to appoint or reinstitute the Long Range Planning Committee. Now, we talked about this earlier tonight. There's going to be an announcement that's going to go out regarding this. We're going to seek people to be on this committee. Basically, we want to redo the master plan. So going forward, that we have a firm master plan that we all agree on. We think it's about time. Um, the membership of that committee and the number of members on the committee, it's all up in a discussion. We'll determine that at a later date. But just be advised that's coming soon. Just sure, go ahead. Just a point of clarification. Will it be the board, the entire board that's involved in the appointment process? Yeah, I'm not I'm not answering that because I'm trying to be deceptive or hide to hide the ball here. I don't know how it works. My understanding is for committees, I appoint. But what I will say is this, I will consult with all the board members on the people we appoint, and I'll make sure that we have a diverse group. Well, I'd like to look into that, because I, I think we should all look at the resumes together and interview people as a board. Well, I think we're going to do it that way. I'm just wondering from a legal perception, yeah, like what, what the process is, I'm not sure. But I can promise you, and it's part of the public record. I mean, this is a big deal, and I think we absolutely have to all interview everybody that and then make a selection as a board together. Legally, I'm not sure how that happens, but I don't see how that process. I think the reason why it's important 
is that obviously the board will then have to, once this plan is, is developed, we'll have to agree on what the final account plan is. And I think if we all have input on the makeup of that board, or that committee rather, that'll um, provide some additional buy-in to whatever the output is coming out of that committee. You have my pledge that you'll have buy-in. You'll have, uh, listen, I want this is gonna be a waste of time to, to create a committee that creates some biased document that everybody hates. I hope, let's just, one thing I ask you guys is we choose people that can cooperate and work together so that we can create something that we're all proud of. Well, we can ask them if they the process. Right. So let's work out offline here, whether it's legal, forget the legal thing, we'll work about that later. Offline, we'll work about what, work out what type of process we want to go through to choose people for this and make sure that we all feel comfortable with who's on it. Okay? Um, okay. Next, there's a report from the Department of Engineering. Oh. I think it's an appointment. I, 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 we can do that if that's what's required by law. I think it's just an appointment for the committee. Let's take a motion. So I'll entertain a motion to reinstitute the committee, Long Range Planning Committee. Uh, Discussion? Yes. I'd like, I'd like to wait. And the reason for that is I'd like to figure out our, what are we going to use for a process? I would agree. And after we figure out our process and you've and, and got the answer on the, exactly how it needs to be formed legally, right. if it's an appointment, if it's a town board action, if, are we going to interview these people, are we going to advertise or whatever? I mean, I well, can't we just create the shell today so we have it? I mean, there's just nobody in it. I mean, it's going to be created one way or the other. I mean, I'm not trying to stack the deck here. Okay. I just want to get the. I well, just want to get it moving. Well, if if you would agree to um, include in this motion that the board will be involved in the selection process equally, then then I would be comfortable with voting yes or a. I think the the only reason why I'm hesitant. I think the appointment. Of, okay, here's the thing. The appointment of committees, I believe, is in the power of the supervisor by law. So I can't change the law by decree from the bench. But what we can do is, the committee has, whatever the committee does, you're all going to have a chance to look at and approve or disapprove. And I promise you, it's on the record, I'm not going to try to stack the deck. I just want to get this moving because I want to seek funds, as we heard about earlier tonight, from the, you know, from the farm board and from other groups that may be able to give us some funding so we can do this properly. I just want to get the process started. I think we can delay it. Go ahead. If you have the ability to appoint the committee, mm -hmm. you know what doesn't make a difference if we make a motion or not. If you have the ability, you can just go appoint a committee. Absolutely. I, this is, I'm just trying so to make sure you're happy with it. So, 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 point. so I appoint the committee. <laughs> well, go ahead. I'll withdraw the motion. I'm going to appoint the committee. Thanks, Ray. <laughs> we'll go forward that way. So what I want to do, I want to explain this to everyone in public. I just want to get this process started so we have this committee ready, because I think it's going to take a long time to get a new, a new uh, master plan put together. So that's why I'm rushing. I'm not rushing it. I think having it there, the next step we'll do in our next workshop will determine the process of getting people on it, and we'll determine you know, whether we make a public announcement in the paper or what we need to do to make sure we have full buy-in from the community. So whatever we create, if it's not done trans in a transparent manner, is going to be useless anyway. I just want to get the process started. So, so, so just as a point, um, not having seen the um, particular law that indicates that the supervisor solely appoints, I don't know if you're able to reference it right now, but if you're not, I'm hesitant to say that our meeting minutes should reflect that we've made that decision at this point. Can I ask, what are you worried about? You think I'm going to try to create a master plan to like put Disneyland in the middle of the island or something? But what's, no, I, what's I, the real concern here? My concern is, I think, as a board, that we need to be aligned on the appointment of this committee. And um, I think that that's going to be an important part of the process. And I, I agree with you 100%. 100%. But if it's the supervisor's prerogative to appoint the committee, if he wants to appoint the committee to whomever he wants to be on it, he can do that. I think he's saying to us that he's going to involve us in the process. That sure would be nice. And 
I'm going to try to hold him to that. You can hold me to it. You'll, Mike, I promise you, you'll be involved in it. I just, I just, so many things in, in local politics take forever, and this is going to take forever. I just want to get started. I promise you, you'll be involved. Bev will be involved. Chris will be involved. Ray will be involved. I think so far, you know, I'm pretty easy to work with. I'm pretty reasonable. I agree with that. Too. So let's, I just, and I just, okay, I understand. I just am sensitive to how so it's reflected. That's all. Got it. Okay. Got it. Um, then moving on. Can I get, Mike, can I get your report of the audit committee? Yes. So I'd like to, excuse me. Oh, we skipped an item here. You're right. Sorry. So we're going to go to the authorization for additional lights. Spicer Creek Townhouses, lighting district number 30. This is right here. I don't know if you guys read this or not. The Spicer Creek Homeowners Association is requesting authorization from the town to add four low lot LED lights for lighting their road signage. So can I get a motion, entertain a motion to approve or to acknowledge our consent that we received this? Roll call. Kinney? Aye. Aronica? Aye. Felica? Aye. Madigan? Aye. McMurray? Aye. Okay. Report from uh, the audit committee, Mike. I'd like to make a motion to pay the following amounts for the following accounts. The general fund, $22,499.01. The highway fund, $30,890.48. The sewer fund, $26,620.62. The water fund, $88,438.04. The capital fund, $10,775. The capital reserve fund, $4,090.05 for a total of $183,273.20. Could I have a second? A second. Roll call. Madigan? Aye. Kinney? Aye. Billicum? Aye. Veronica? Aye. McMurray? Aye. Okay. So here's the uh, big item for tonight, unfinished business. Local law intro number eight of 2015, amend the town code regarding R2 zoning. For, for the public here tonight, we made a small change to this to clarify the issue regarding duplexes. Can you explain that, Peter? Sure. The prior version of local law, uh, the local law at, at issue had uh, carved out a, the lawful status of those structures which were legal um, at the time of the change to the local law. In other words, making it clear that anything that was lawful at the time that the local law goes into effect remain lawful after the local law goes into effect. There have been some requests to make sure that that language and concept was incorporated into the final version of the local law and actually printed in the town law, uh, the, the, the code book for the town of Grand Island. So the, the change uh, merely incorporates that, that sentiment which had been contained in the legislative intent and now codifies it in the in 407-41 of the uh, uh, chapter 407 of town laws. Okay, that being said, go ahead. I want you to approve that. <laughs> I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay, which, what is this? This will be local law number two of 2016. Roll call. Veronica? Aye. Kinney? Here. Billica? Aye. Madigan? Aye. McMurray? Aye. It's like a monkey off our back. We can move forward. Um, public comments now. So this is on any subject whatsoever. Please come to the mic. State your name. State your address. Feel free to state your mind. Paul Cotman, 246 Timberlink. Um, two things tonight. Um, of course, the R2, um, those of us who have been fighting this for almost two years, I applaud the town board for recognizing the rights of its citizens. Um, both the town board of 2014-15 and, of course, the new members. Um, I think 
think most people are familiar with what this is. It certainly goes a long way in protect, protecting residents from developers coming in. At least it gives them, the developer, some sort of a guideline where Grand Island not only stands now, but where we, where we want to go in the future. So I applaud the town board for doing this. And the second thing um, is very refreshing to me to hear give and take not only between town board members and the supervisor, and to have a town board member ask a question to me is what the process is all about. And number two, which is equally and probably more refreshing, is we not only have the town board actually going out and talking to citizens, um, regardless of where you stand on any issue, whether it be a uh, farm issue, zoning, trapping, it doesn't matter. And really where the town board stands, I think really does matter. And for them to cement a position without actually speaking to a resident or doing their due diligence, I think would be ludicrous, and I applaud Mr. Madigan, uh, Ray, everyone for going out, the town supervisor, I heard this in several workshops, actually going out to visit properties. I mean, it is January, folks. So this is what I view as town government at its best. So very seldom does the board get any kind of recognition on the positive, but I want to officially be on the record for doing that tonight, and I think everyone here in the room should recognize the fact that our town board, regardless of what your position is, politically or otherwise, has to know that we have people here who are actually going out, doing their due diligence, and actually talking to the citizens of Grand Island. I personally applaud you. All you. Thank you. Paul, I want to say one thing. I visited you in the summer, not so long ago. Well, I expect you, uh, Mr. McMurray, to come in January. <laughs> that would be the thing to do. Well, it, it was a great, and you showed a great kindness to me then. Thank you so much, and thank you for saying those kind words tonight. I want to say one thing about the town board, too. We all know it was a tough election. I said this before, but I cannot emphasize enough how fun and great it's been to work with these four so far. I hope it continues that way. I've learned a lot from them. They've been, I think we have a pretty good thing going here. And I think uh, I, we're generating and developing a level of respect that I did not suspect. So that's been great. So thank you for your kind words. But we'll continue to fight. And Mike, I appreciate you standing up for yourself too and, and, and telling me when you think I'm wrong. I appreciate that. Any other comments? Just on the Bryce Shim, the 2026 Road, right now. Mr. Murray, I just want to say, hearing you talk about the fact that you talked with an expert tracker made my day today. The fact that you text touch traps. What I want to just couch that with is the fact that uh, when I read the law that's being proposed, and the opening paragraph says the town of Grand Island is composed of diverse areas during population, density, and natural ecosystems, and thus the town must attempt to provide appropriate provide appropriately for both suburban and rural concerns with it, within its borders. But we're going to leave out trappers. The statement is, we're going to provide for everybody but the traffic. And then I heard the double talk of someone saying, we had 800 people sign our petition. Washington State, West Virginia, Portland, is put on the web and it's open to everybody so we have 800 all of us so the double talk is what i know you're going to see through and that's why i'm just appreciating you saying what you're saying so i just want to say that. well i'm going to do everything in my t power to understand the issue and I'll, thank you for saying that i did meet with some trappers today and I, the young woman who was here earlier i'm going to speak to her more and i think you know i ray i know you've spoken to a lot of people yourself i think we need to talk about this more to make sure we don't do any knee jerk legislation that will cause more harm than good, but I want to understand it better. And I'm not an expert on the subject. The uh, gentleman that was in here earlier was very kind to go through hundreds of pictures with me and, and show me this trapping manual. He, we have a copy for the board members if you want one. Mike, you don't need one, I'm sure. But we have uh, some different materials. 
But I need to speak to the other side and understand their side more. I hope we can find a, a middle ground somewhere, and that's what my goal is. So maybe eventually I'll get you in the room, Bryce, and we can talk about it with her at the same time, and we can hopefully find a solution that makes both sides happy. And if that's not possible, the, it'll be up to the board to make a decision. So, um, Anything else from the crowd? Okay, we're good. So I'm going to take a moment of silence to remember the violence who have passed since our last meeting. First, I'm going to make a motion. Sorry, make a motion to adjourn the meeting first. Then we're going to have a, a moment of silence. Can we take that? So it's the islands who have passed are Mary Jane Francher, excuse me, Mary Jane Thatcher, Christina Zakia, Patricia Gress. Elizabeth Budd, Judith Pagano, Rebecca Agnello, William Hamlet, Alvin Sick III, Francis Quinn. Meeting adjourned. Is there any students that need your paper?